The coronavirus pandemic has reached every country in the world, and the countries are still reeling from its consequences. In its latest report, the Asian Development Bank forecasts the Kazakh economic growth to reach 3.2% in 2021 and 3.5% in 2022, given the manufacturing, investments and hydrocarbon production all will increase. To discuss what Kazakhstan can do to ensure the sustainability of its economy, I am going to talk today with Gennady Rao, Asian Development Bank Economics Officer. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it's been a year into pandemic and the countries worldwide are still reeling from the consequences of the COVID-19 outbreak. If you could tell us what is the estimated uh, loss of the region for Central Asia. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, our estimates for uh, 2020 for Central Asia and Caucasus is that the economy is contracted by 1.9% of GDP. And uh, we have to keep in mind that the contraction was primarily driven by the largest economy in the region, it's Kazakhstan. The economy contracted by 2.6%. Uh, there were actually even worse performers. For example, the economy of Kyrgyz Republic, it contracted by 8.9%. But there were several economies which actually grew uh, last year. It was uh, Uzbekistan, uh, which had uh, very minor growth and uh, uh, several others. So there was an even performance, but overall uh, there was like slowdown in economic growth as well as contraction of uh, many economies in the region. Kazakhstan has been relying on its oil and gas reserves for years and last year has seen the significant plunge in oil prices in April and coupled with prolonged unemployment and school closures stemming from the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, the economy has been hit hard last year. So how would you assess the impact on the Kazakh economy so far? So uh, basically that shock had uh, several channels which impacted Kazakhstan. First of all, uh, low oil prices, they impacted the current account uh, deficit. And uh, our uh, trade uh, balance uh, went significantly down because uh, our exports collapsed because of low oil prices. Also, uh, because we had to rejoin OPEC plus deal, we had to restrict our oil production, so it impacted the output of oil and gas. We saw mining sector declining. But the major impact was actually on the services sector. The services sector transport saw a double-digit decline, as well as the trade was significantly impacted because of mobility restrictions and quarantine measures implemented by the government. Uh, at the same time, I have to note that government uh, provided support and uh, we uh, conducted a, a study which estimated that uh, due to government support, the uh, contraction economic was restricted and uh, the economic growth uh, will rebound this year uh, thanks to government uh, support measures, which are estimated at around 9% of uh, GDP uh, we, if we count fiscal and monetary measures of the government. This is indeed a very significant figure. And what about the communications sector? I mean, uh, among all the sectors that you It's actually uh, increased, it's expanded uh, last year. It was one of the few sectors which benefited uh, from uh, COVID-19 because so many uh, people were on uh, working uh, from home. There was an uh, increased uh, need for uh, communication services, uh, Zoom uh, and many other companies you have seen, they, their capitalization on the stock exchange grew significantly. That's one of the indicators. Uh, we also saw there is an increased uh, demand for medical services. They also expanded uh, due to pandemic uh, and uh, several other sectors. Uh, they uh, benefited. How would you assess uh, the government's response to these shocks? As I mentioned, the government uh, provided quite generous support uh, to the economy. It had, uh, for example, uh, substituted some income losses, uh, it provided some social support, as well as investment into infrastructure, uh, manufacturing sector, and uh, that uh, uh, type of support is uh, quite beneficial in the long term, because like, it creates a sustainable uh, uh, growth. Uh, and, uh, for example, uh, Asian Development Bank, we uh, provided uh, counter-cyclical support to the government. We allocated one billion loan uh, and as well as we provided almost five million in uh, technical assistance to the government. Uh, what we uh, note is that uh, every time when uh, Kazakhstan recovers from uh, external shock, uh, uh, the economic growth is uh, 
uh, slower than prior to the economic shock. And uh, there is a need uh, to promote uh, innovation in Kazakhstan. That's a um, challenge, uh, the policy challenge that uh, is noted in the chapter uh, on Kazakhstan. And uh, there is a need to uh, promote creative destruction, so-called. Uh, it's uh, uh, visible in the sense that uh, we spend less and less uh, money on uh, research and development in Kazakhstan, for example, over 10 years, a period of time. The uh, share of uh, spending on research and development uh, as a GDP declined steadily from 0.23% uh, to 0.12% by 2019. And uh, we allocate so few resources on research and development so that uh, the number of uh, applications for uh, innovative developments also declined over that period of time. In 2018 and 2019, less than 1,000 uh, applications for uh, research and development uh, innovative patents was uh, submitted. So uh, there is a need to promote innovation in Kazakhstan and the uh, government uh, can uh, support uh, uh, innovation in Kazakhstan and it will help uh, to grow, uh, to ensure sustainable growth in the future. The outlook mentions the need for promote innovation. So how can Kazakhstan do that and why it is important? So uh, in the chapter we mention a range of uh, options for the government, but I can mention a few of them. Uh, for example, one of the options is to create incentives for private sector to invest into innovation. Because when we look at the spending on innovation, majority of the spending is coming from public sector. And uh, it's uh, quite uh, uh, different in many developed countries because in developed countries majority of the spending on research and development is coming from the private sector. For example, quite large uh, R&D budgets are uh, in such companies as Apple, Microsoft and many others. In Kazakhstan, few, very few companies are allocating funds for research and development. Uh, why? Uh, because there's uh, no incentives for them to invest into research and development. Government can create uh, tax breaks incentive system for companies to invest into research and development, as well as commit its own funds to research and development by matching sometimes uh, innovative spending. So uh, that's one of the options that is available. Another option is to invest into education system of Kazakhstan. Uh, government, uh, it's uh, uh, widely agreed that Kazakhstan is one of the lowest spenders on education system and Kazakhstan uh, has to uh, invest into infrastructure of education system as well as raising salaries of uh, teachers uh, to promote innovation. And uh, one more suggestion is to promote brain circulation. Uh, it's uh, when uh, Kazakh researchers can collaborate with uh, foreign researchers, that foreigners can come uh, to Kazakhstan. Uh, for example, many countries offer uh, visa uh, for uh, foreign researchers and innovators, as well as uh, residency permits. So uh, Kazakhstan can liberalize its um, legislation in that regard by encouraging uh, migration of high-talented individuals to Kazakhstan for uh, research purposes and uh, to collaborate with local researchers. That can be also encouraged. Aside from the prolonged unemployment that the country has witnessed after the coronavirus outbreak, there were also significant school closures. And how would you assess the impact of them on the Kazakh economy moving forward? So uh, the uh, unemployment rate increased uh, back in uh, s uh, spring of 2019, but it was short-lived increase in unemployment. It was so-called temporary unemployment because of the restrictions. After uh, those restrictions were lifted, uh, many people returned to their workplaces, uh, but there is still the structural unemployment and government has a range of programs to tackle the structural unemployment. Actually, as I mentioned, ADB allocated uh, close to 5 million grant assistance and uh, we launched Solidarity Fund in 2020 uh, with the United Nations Development Program and we are helping the government to retrain uh, those people who lost uh, their uh, jobs due to COVID-19. We are helping them to reintegrate into the labor market by offering some uh, training and retraining courses. So government uh, can uh, have like targeted work with those people who lost uh, the jobs. As I mentioned also, government can increase funding of education system. Uh, we saw that uh, many students, uh, school students, they had uh, challenges with uh, accessing like uh, online uh, education platforms so uh, they can uh, spend uh, more funds on uh, purchasing the equipment uh, for uh, schools uh, to have like uh, laptops or uh, tablets or 
uh, other means for communication and uh, also developing online content for schools um, in the future. Could you also tell us about the Asian Development Bank's forecast on the Kazakh economic growth in this year and the next years? Thank you. So uh, for uh, 2021, our forecast is uh, economic recovery at 3.2% per annum and uh, it's accelerating for the next year 3.5%. Uh, we have uh, key assumptions for uh, that growth. Uh, first of all, we hope that the pandemic is contained and uh, there is no um, uh, significant outbreak. You know that there are new uh, versions of COVID-19. And uh, we also hope that uh, by the end of this year, at least one third of the population, it's uh, 6 million people, uh, are vaccinated. Uh, we see that vaccination is uh, picking up and uh, we hope that uh, this uh, trend will continue and the vaccine, vaccine rollout will uh, be widespread uh, throughout Kazakhstan. Aside from uh, promoting innovation, which uh, we mentioned as being important, what Kazakhstan can else do to ensure its steady recovery? Kazakhstan should uh, work on structural reforms of its economy. As I mentioned, uh, it is too dependent on uh, oil and gas sector and extractive industries. Uh, we, uh, as the Asian Development Bank, uh, started a conversation with the government on structural reforms, and we are ready to provide uh, policy-based lending, it's a loan to the government of Kazakhstan uh, on structural reform, where we uh, as a bank agree with the government on a range of targets and uh, the sector-specific uh, reform. And we help uh, the government to implement it jointly uh, by providing uh, as uh, loan assistance as, as well as technical assistance. Uh, we are discussing a range of uh, possible areas for the structural reforms, including uh, reforms of uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, debt sustainability, green growth and other areas. Uh, it is still early stages of the discussion. We are hoping to have uh, some agreement signed uh, by the end of this year and uh, the um, loan active next year. If you could tell us also about the potential effect of the country's privatization plans in its recovery from the COVID-19, because we know that this year the government decided to push on its um, privatization reforms. As we all know, the uh, president recently mentioned uh, the need to relaunch the privatization program and because like, of COVID-19 uh, last year, a few uh, major APOs were like, uh, put aside because of uh, market conditions. Uh, it was Air Astana, as I remember. And uh, yes, government needs to rethink its approach and now I believe like they want to have it public IPO. Uh, there is a uh, at the moment, uh, the market is uh, performing really well and uh, uh, many companies which are go uh, public, they uh, receive quite good valuations. And, uh, uh, but in Kazakhstan, because of its structural issues with the economy and uh, over-reliance on the commodities, and uh, uh, <coughs> so there are issues with uh, coming uh, to the market. Uh, so hopefully, uh, if government restructures its economy and uh, restart this privatization campaign, there will be more private initiative and uh, the economy will grow sustainably. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much.